Hello, everybody, and this is Stacy from The Advisor, and today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Whitney Prude, and she is an expert when it comes to weight loss. She is a coach, and she has much, much experience in this area. She's also part of our podcast team, and she has a podcast on The Advisor, so go out and check her out. Check out her previous podcast. She has a lot to say, and it's very valuable information that will help you in your journey to healthy weight loss and a healthy, happy, productive life. So Whitney, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Yeah. So like you said, I'm, my name is Whitney Prude. I'm, I am a board certified clinical pharmacist. So I am employed at the Mayo Clinic, but currently I'm, I'm working full time in my business, which is really exciting for me. Um, so I, uh, I'm also a certified health and wellness coach, a certified nutrition coach. And I mean, really and truly, I'm, I'm here to help people to make sure that they avoid the pitfalls of poor health, uh, you know, and, and chronic illness later on in life, um, that we can, we can prevent a lot of those things. You don't have to be miserable. You don't have to lose a lot of your life. Uh, if you can just take care of yourself right now. And so a lot of people, there's a lot of barriers that people can't, um, seem to get over on their own, which is pretty normal. Um, and so, you know, I, I specifically have designed a program to, to help them to overcome those things so that they can be successful at reaching their goals. That's amazing. You know, I think it's so important that people learn how to be healthy the right way. There's so much information out there and people kind of get lost in it. Now, today, I know that you wanted to talk about the emotional and mental barriers of weight loss. And, you know, can you go a little dive a little deeper? Now, what do you exactly mean when you talk about the emotional and mental barriers of weight loss? Yeah, absolutely. This is something that I'm incredibly passionate about. And most people don't realize the impact of, you know, and, and how important the mental and emotional stuff is until we actually start diving into it and still until I present it. Right. So if you think about the diet and weight loss industry, so what, you know, what do we have? We have quick fix diets, you know, people, they, they look at themselves as like, Hey, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm unhealthy. I've, I've got to improve my health. So what do we do? We go directly to food and exercise, or we do right. crazy things with our food or pills or whatever, right? We're trying to get a quick fix. We're trying to get this weight off. But the reality is that the biggest hole in the diet and weight loss industry is that we're not actually addressing the root cause. We're not yeah. looking at our situation and saying, wait a second, why in the world did I get here in the first place? What yeah. has driven me to get here? What's driving my behavior? Why am I making the choices that I'm making? Why am I doing the things that I'm doing? Why am I living the way that I'm living? Because mm -hmm. even if we jump on board with a diet, Okay. So we, you know, we, we do keto or we do weight watchers or what, whatever, right. We jump on board with a diet and we stick to it for however many months, right. We can have the willpower to change yeah. our food for a certain amount of time. But as soon as we finish that quick fix diet, right. The reality is, is that we are going to go right back to what is ingrained inside of us, to what is driving our behavior. So awesome. why does the majority of people gain all of the weight back and even more after they lose or after they lose it's because they never change what's driving their behavior in the first place so all of the mental and the emotional things that are causing them to do the things that they're doing that has gotten their health to the place where it's at they're not they're not addressing any of those things so even after they finish a diet it's going to drive them right back where they started from yeah. Oh, hundred percent. You know, I was just talking with someone and, and they were saying they went out to lunch with somebody and they were having, um, this person had just got on, um, medication like Ozempic to lose weight because they just had a heart attack and they had to lose the weight. And they went out to lunch and the one person had a salad and the other person who just had the heart attack and who just lost the 50 pounds actually um, was eating a burger and fries. And so, you know, it, it's people have to realize that, you know, you could do all you want to lose weight quickly, but if you don't change the way you live and you don't change your, the, your eating patterns and the way you, you know, live your daily lives, you're going to just go back to square one again. Yep. 100%. 
Now, when you when you talk about emotional barriers, like, you know, a lot of people go through life and, and they have they go through things where they um, they have trauma in their life or they might come from a dysfunctional family or things happen in life and they, and they have a hard time dealing with it. So they use, you know, food as a coping mechanism. And that is so common in our society. And the problem is, is that, you know, when you use food for comfort, you know, you know, after a while, it, it your health starts to deteriorate, you start to gain weight, and people struggle. And even if they try to lose weight, and they lose weight, they go back because they're when they're having stress, and they're, they're dealing with things in their life that are overwhelming, they go back to eating as their coping mechanism. So, you know, what are some of the things that, you know, that you want to uh, tell us about how we can deal with these emotional, you know, distresses in our life, and, you know, to go more deep into the emotional barriers of how, you know, how we deal with, you know, coping with our life and, and not letting our emotions draw us to food? Yeah, really good question. And, and it's a big question. Um, so really the, the first thing is to recognize, you know, to start recognizing where these things actually come from. Because when we can increase our awareness, awareness is really, really powerful. Once we yeah. become aware of why we're doing the things that we're doing, a lot of the stuff that we do on a regular basis, we're on autopilot. Our brains have just created, you know, created pathways um, that it's just, it's the path of least resistance. It's what we're used to. And so we just automatically do certain things. And the majority of them, we're not actually consciously aware of what we're doing and why we're doing it. Yeah. So the, the first step is really becoming aware. And in order to become aware, we've got to go back to why this happened in the first place. So one of the things that I really focus on with a lot of my clients is we got to go back even to our childhood, right? It's like, you know, I've got a 55 year old woman wants to lose weight and I'm asking her about her childhood. And she's like, what the crap? You know, like, what are we doing? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, <laughs> but the reality is, is that if we, we take this 55 year old woman, right. And we go back into her past and say, what well, what did your childhood look like? And it's like, okay, well, my dad was an alcoholic. He, you know, he was angry. Um, he, he always tried to avoid, you know, getting in trouble or making dad mad. Um, mm -hmm. and then, and then mom is trying to cope, right. She's essentially codependent, um, she's trying to take care of dad. She's trying to keep the peace and not, you know, yeah. make sure that he's not angry. Um, and a lot of times in a situation just like that, you know, people or, or kids, children don't get their needs met. And right. what happens when as children, we don't get our emotional needs met and we don't feel truly loved and worthy, then yeah. what our brains start to do is, is we start to find ways to survive. We start yeah. to find ways to fill the void. So, and, and everyone's different. And the way that we kind of choose to fill the void or the way that we choose to figure out how to survive, you know, it's all, it's always different person to person. But the reality is, is that we're all doing the same thing. We're trying right. to fill the void. We're trying to get our needs met. We're trying to feel good enough. Yeah. And so some of the most common things that I see that people develop, um, one, of, one of them is people pleasing. Right. Yeah. So you don't feel loved and needed and important and worthy. And so what do you do? Well, you start taking care of everybody else, because if you can take care of everybody else and you can make everybody else happy and do all of the right things, then you will be right. loved. Exactly. And so people pleasing is one of them. But when you're taking care of everybody else, you're not taking care of yourself and you start to right. feel like taking care of yourself is really selfish. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that it's uncomfortable. It's not normal. It's not what you're used to. You know, you just don't go there. Um, yeah. And so, so that's one of the things. Um, perfectionism is another thing. If you can just yeah. do everything right, if you can do everything right and, and meet these high expectations, right, then yeah. your, your parents will notice you. They'll acknowledge you. You'll, you'll be loved. You'll be, you know, you'll be worthy. You'll be good enough. Again, filling that same void inside yeah. of us. Um, mm -hmm. Same thing with overachieving. Let's say somebody, you know, is super, super successful in their career, but their career like takes over their life. Yeah. It, you know, it consumes them to the point that they can't take care of themselves. They can't prioritize, you know, their body, their health. 
And it's the same thing. They're overachieving because they're trying mm-hmm. to feel good enough. They're trying to fill the void inside of themselves of yeah. being noticed, being recognized, being loved. Um, and that's, they depend on achievement yes. for self-worth. Right. And so the, really the first step is going back and figuring out, you know, what have I been through and what have I developed, you yeah. know, as part of kind of who I am and how I live, what have I developed to cause myself to do the things that I'm doing? Right. And essentially, you know, you wouldn't, you wouldn't think about it. You wouldn't say, oh, my childhood is making me make these food decisions. You wouldn't, th- you know, you wouldn't think about it like that. But yeah. when you when you put it together piece by piece and you say, OK, this is where it came from. Now I'm people pleasing. This is yeah. why I'm people pleasing. These are all of the things that I'm doing. I'm realizing that taking care of myself feels completely foreign. It's uncomfortable. I don't know. You know, I don't know how to do it. It doesn't feel right. Like right. those people aren't going to prioritize taking care of themselves until they've worked through all of this stuff. Yeah. And they've been told, you know, this is essential. It's important and it's okay, right? You've got yeah. to start prioritizing yourself above all of these other people. So, so the process is different for everyone because yeah. everyone's developed different coping mechanisms and different ways that they live in order to survive and in order to feel good enough um, in life. But, but the reality is, is that really and truly, what do people have to do? they have to find themselves and they have to learn how to, you know, be okay showing up internally for, you know, the person in the mirror. Um, And it's a, it's a hard thing to do. And if you don't have guidance and and help in order to do it, you know um, it's, I would say nearly impossible (laughs) as human beings to take ourselves there without some guidance and a little, and a little nudging. What are some of the techniques that are used to actually find yourself? Because, you know, I think that's a very difficult thing, too, is is to be able to find yourself after so many years of living life a certain way, so many years of growing up and people telling you who you are, what to do, da, 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 and then going through, you know, life and going through trauma and then, you know, thinking, okay, who am I? You know, I think everybody gets to that point in life where they look and they look in the mirror and they're like, who am I? What is my true passion? What is my purpose? You know, why am I here? You know, and, 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 you know, and not some people, a lot of people not being happy with who they see in the mirror, you know? And so, so what are some of the ways that people could actually, you know, uh, actually help themselves to find themselves to actually, you know, figure out, you know, who they are, what's going on and why are they doing what they're doing? Yeah. Good, good question. I mean, there's, there's a lot of steps and our, you know, our program goes through um, the the first four weeks, you know, we really take people on this process of like step-by-step, you know, asking questions and helping them to really dive in and dig into themselves. But one of, one of the first things um, just kind of getting people going and and digging in a little bit. One of the first things that we do um, I, I call it the power of growth. Okay. This is the second week in the program. And what we do is, is we help people, number one, to find their strengths, Mm -hmm. to discover their values, um, to write out a vision for themselves and to find their purpose, impact and list out their priorities. So this is just the first step in getting to know who we are, right? Because I mean, a lot of people, even sitting down and finding their strengths is uncomfortable. You yes. know, it's like, oh, I shouldn't be talking about myself or I don't want to be bragging. I don't want to be arrogant. I don't, you know, it's not bragging. It's not arrogant. It's being happy with the person that you are. And that's OK. Yeah. Um, yeah. And and it, it brings a lot of power when we actually know what our strengths are. Right. When we, when we know what our values are, then then we know where we're headed. We know what we start to stand up for. We know what our boundaries are and where we start to set them. So the the more that the more that we get to know ourselves, who yeah. we are, and what yeah. our strengths are, um, it we can start to decide. You know, where where are we going to start moving? What yeah. you know, where is this going to direct us? And then, and then we dive into, you know, creating a vision. Right. And what we do with a vision is essentially diving into what we, what our ideal future looks like. So let's say five years down the road, 
what does your ideal life look like? And Mm -hmm. we start writing things out of physically what it looks like, but also internally, how do you want to feel about yourself? You know, you want to love the woman in the mirror that you look at. Um, you know, you, you want to be confident and, and all of these things, but then with this vision, we write it as though they're already there. Right. And it's really cool. Like how empowering that vision of like, this is where I want to get to, but now I'm reading it out loud to myself. You know, it becomes this really powerful affirmation of, you know, this is, this is who I am. And this is, Mm -hmm. you know, this is how my, my ideal life is. And we're speaking it, (laughs) you know, we're speaking it out, putting it out there in the universe. Um, So, so all of these things, and even, you know, helping people to find their purpose of like, you actually have a purpose and it's not, you know, just meeting everybody's needs. Um, You, you do, you're, you have a purpose, you're a unique individual, and we have to really Mm -hmm. harness those things so that you can live your most fulfilling life. Right. It's not just, you know, if you meet everyone's expectations, you can be good enough. No, yeah. you can make a difference with yes. who you are and with your skills and your strengths and um, and your values and the life that you deserve to live. So that's just, I mean, that's starting out, right? That's surface yeah. level. Um, just just getting to know ourselves and and basically writing out a path of like, this is who I am. This is where I want to get to. And we start putting right. that out there in the universe, right? Right. Then from there, we start digging deeper. Mm -hmm. Then we start looking at, you know, what are, um, what are some of the thoughts that we tell ourselves? What are some of the negative, you know, limiting beliefs that we have about ourselves? And then we start to dig in, where do these actually come from? What are some of the triggers? What are the emotions that come up with these types of things? Um, you know, all of that stuff. And we, we do provide some tools and, and I can talk about one of the, one of the tools that, that I use most commonly to help people to kind of dive really deep into themselves. Um, but this is just, you know, just kind of outlining the process of like, yeah. we just get started and over the process, we just go deeper and deeper and deeper and help people to really build this awareness and then give them yeah. the tools to process the things that they need to process and then push themselves into discomfort. I mean, if you want right. to change, you've got to get uncomfortable. That's the bottom yeah. line. It's true, you know, and I, it, it's always a painful process, but once you get over the hump, you feel so much better. And I think like when you mentioned like the expectations of others and, you know, so many people, we have grown up to please our parents, to please this one, to please that one. And, you know, you grow up and you you become, you know, a lot of people, you know, want to please everyone. They want, you know, and, and the last person they try to please is themselves and they put themselves on the back burner. And like you mentioned earlier, you know, when you do that, you sometimes feel guilty about doing things for yourself and helping yourself and what you need for yourself. And, you know, those are really true statements, you know, so after you create your vision and you're moving forward, you know, is there, is there a way that you help people to actually, you know, not gravitate to food as their coping mechanism that they have other resources other than food? Absolutely. And really and truly, so usually when people are going to food, it's emotional, right? Mm -hmm. So the whole purpose of of what we're doing, because we are incorporating food with this journey, right? The whole purpose of of what we're doing is to start to create this divide between Mm -hmm. mental and emotional health and physical health. Just because you're emotional, just because you're going through something challenging in life, does not mean that your physical health has to suffer and that you you know that you have to destroy yourself right mm-hmm. so right. Uh, so just one one example of like an exercise and this is just kind of like just getting people started of making yeah. a connection between emotions and the food that they're choosing i always tell you know i always tell them to ask themselves four questions before they ever yeah. eat right. and the you know the first question is am i hungry that's the first mm-hmm. question If you're going to food, are you hungry? Right. And if you're not hungry, then that is not what your body needs right now. Right. Okay. So the second question is, if you're not hungry, then you start asking yourself, well, why am I going to food? Right. Right. We start asking the deeper question. What's the why behind this? 
Exactly. Is this a habit? Am I exhausted? Am I stressed? Am I lonely? Am I bored? Did I have a super day, hard day at work? And I feel like I deserve this. Um, yeah. You know, what, what's the why? Why are you yeah. going to food right now when food is not actually going to meet your body's need? Cause you're not hungry. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's the second question. Um, the third question is what do I really need? Yeah. So we start thinking about, okay, so if we find the why and we say, okay, well, I'm really, really stressed and anxious right now. Yeah. So then we ask the question, well, what do I need? I don't need food. I'm not hungry. I have a trigger. I'm going to food, but that's not what I actually need. Right. So how do I actually meet my body's needs mm -hmm. without using food? Well, then we right. start talking about other tools that you can use when you're stressed, when you're anxious, right? Do you do some meditation? Do you take some time to just sit down and relax? Do you go for a walk? Do you, you know, call your spouse and vent? Do you yeah. like, what, what is it? Right. But actually meeting the need of what you need to meet, as opposed okay. to just swallowing it with food. Exactly. So, um, so that's essentially the fourth question is how do I meet that need? right? So you figure out what the need is, and then how do I meet that need? And essentially, we want to help you to have a toolbox of what, what can I pull out? When I feel this, I pull out this tool. When I feel like this, I have, you know, three different tools that I can pull out and I can use to help meet my emotional needs without using food. So true. Oh, that's a great answer. You know, it's it many times people just, you know, they they just grab, you know, I, I've seen myself do it myself at nighttime. You know, you're just sitting there watching TV and it's become a pattern, a bad habit. And it's like, okay, it's my my snack time, you know, and it and I'm not really hungry, but I'm so used to grabbing that little snack at night. And it's such a bad habit because especially if you're trying to lose weight or you're trying to get a, a better figure and be healthier, you know, you know, 1030 at night when you're watching your favorite show is not the time to do it, you know. And, uh, you know, sometimes we put ourselves in those bad habits too, you know, and we have to really re-examine, it seems, ourselves, and, and going from square one, like you talked about, all the way through and then just really readjusting your entire life, it seems. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, you do. You absolutely do. You start thinking completely different. You start viewing yourself completely different. And then because you because of those things on the internal side, you yeah. start acting different. You start making right. different choices. And that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that it's all of a sudden going to be easy, right? Yeah. We have to change our brains. And yeah. we do actually have the ability to change our brains, but you have to remember that, you know, it was like, take this 55 year old woman and these things have started developing from her childhood. Well, they've developed over 55 years. So yeah. if you think that it's going to change tomorrow, right, you're right. setting yourself up for failure. It's going to take exactly. time and persistence. Yeah. You have to be right. consistent and force your brain to say, no, that's the, you know, that's the old way of thinking, or that's our yeah. old habit. And it's just a reaction. That's not yeah. me. It's not something I have to follow through with, right? I'm the person that's observing the thoughts yeah. um, and I have the power to choose. I get right. to choose what I do right now and right. taking that pause and being aware and saying, oh gosh, you know, uh, I really do want that treat, but you know, yeah. now that I'm aware of it and I know why I'm doing it, I don't have to do that anymore. And exactly. we start to really reclaim that power. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And it, it, it takes time. Like you said, it's a day by day process, you know, it's, and it's going to take time. Everything that, that is healthy, that, that has, you know, a, a great outcome is always a slow process. You know, there is no quick fix, you know, I don't believe in quick fixes, you know, right. it's, you know, it's really, it's, it's a process that it's like a day by day process and just making little tweaks each day, improve, you know, receiving a little improvements each day. And then before you know it, you start to see big improvements because they all start to add up 
and add up and add up. And then, you know, you, you start to see the new you, you know, and I think that's when, when people really get excited about, cause they, they finally figure out who they are and what their vision is. And they finally figured out what pair of shoes they're really wearing, you know, and it's like, you know, great, you know, revelation, you know, and when you talk about mental health, are you talking about like anxiety, depression? Um, when you talk about the, the, emo the, uh, the mental barriers, like, what do you mean also about the mental barriers? If you could explain it to the audience. Yeah. Yeah. Good question. So, I mean, there, there are varying degrees of mental health, right? And yeah. there, there are aspects where, I mean, as coaches, we only go so deep. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, However, I have had so many people come into my program and say, you know, I've, I'm in therapy or I've done therapy and, you know, it's like, it's helped me to this point and now I don't know what to do. Yeah. Um, I've even had, you know, I've had some like mental health therapists in my program as well. Yeah. And the, the cool thing about uh, our program and, and how it's different from therapy yeah. is that therapy very much goes backwards. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you're, you're going into the past, you're reliving those experiences, you're processing and we'll do, I mean, we'll do a little bit of that. We have one exercise where we kind of help you to work through those things. If we can, yeah. if it's severe trauma, we don't touch it. You know, it's yeah. like, you got to get professional help with those kinds of things. Yeah. Um, um, but you know, in therapy, it's, it's going back. Yeah. With coaching, we're going in and we're going forward. Yes. And so, um, so what our program does and, and ultimately, and I never, I never realized this when I created the program, but as I started having people go through it, I was like, holy crap. Basically what we do is we, we help you to genuinely love yourself. By the end of the program, you will genuinely love and value yourself. And that will be your driving force for why you actually take care of yourself. Yes. And it seems so simple. It's, it's a complex journey and everyone's journey is different. It becomes yeah. very challenging, but that's, that's the bottom line. If you genuinely love respect and honor yourself, yes, you will take care of yourself, but 100%. you have to, you have to really internalize that. And it has to be a true and genuine love and belief in yourself. And when yes. that is really in place, mm -hmm. physical health becomes easy. It's yeah. not even, it's not even hard to say, I'm not eating, like, I'm not putting that in my body. Yeah. You know, I deserve so much better than that. My body wants so much better than that. You know, exactly. you're thinking completely switches. It's not like being controlled by a craving. It's like, I'm not doing that. Like, no right. way. I don't want to feel like crap. Like I, you know, I deserve to feel good. I want to function. I want to have energy. I, you know. Yeah. You begin to really want to take care of yourself. And then the healthy choice becomes the easy choice. Right. So, um, so that's kind of, um, the, well, let me, let me answer your full question because you wanted to know really about the in-depth mental health type things, right? There's a lot of people that come into our program who are, you know, they're on medications, they have mental health issues. Um, and, and, I mean, those people are people that need, you know, the most help in, in what we're doing now. Right. Some people, some people, you know, if they can work through these things and really get them themselves to a point where they can love themselves and, and be at peace with a lot of stuff in their life, um, yeah. they can get off of their medication right. um, when it's severe, you know, they've got really severe depression and, and on a lot of medications, or they might have PTSD or uh, bipolar or, or things like that. Right. Yeah. Um, that's just, we just, we have to work in conjunction with that. Is it going to help them? Absolutely. 100%. Are they going to make leaps and bounds of progress? Absolutely. 100%. So it's going to help them drastically, um, yeah. with those conditions. But when you have conditions like that, that are really, it's, it's not just like working through and processing things. It's on a chemical standpoint, these people, you know, it's like, they have um uh from a bio from a physiological standpoint right that you can't yeah. just change your thoughts and, and change this right right um then you know that it, it is what it is they you know they have those challenges and struggles but we can also we can always do other things to help them to get to a better place and to have a more fulfilling life 
So I hope that kind of answers your question. No, it does. It does. It definitely does. Now, when, when people start to move forward in life and they start to make all these changes, you know, how do they, they stay consistent so they don't relapse? Good question. Very good question. So, I mean, I always, I always like to paint this picture for people when they come into the program, like your journey is not going to be just this perfect line that, you know, is a straight line that is just an upward slope. Okay. Yeah. So what happens is in, and this is in everyone's journey, everyone yeah. is going to fall. That's the reality of it. Right. But most people, when they try to do this journey on their own, when they fall the first time after they've tried so hard and then they fall, most people give up at that point and they never get yeah. up. Right. Okay? So as we go through our program, we put a lot of coaching and support and guidance in place. So that mm -hmm. when they have that first fall and they're like this, you know, this was an awful week, everything, you know, crumbled. I did terrible. I went back to all of my old stuff, uh, you yeah. know, I'm emotionally destroyed, whatever. We're right yeah. there to say, Hey, this is normal. It's yes. a normal part of the process. It doesn't mean right. you failed. It just means right. that you're following the process and you have to go through these things in order to continue moving forward. Right. Yes. So I like to paint a picture for people where it's like you have this line, you have this line going upwards. Right. Mm -hmm. And then you're going to fall. OK. Right. And the first fall is going to be pretty deep and pretty devastating. And that's why mm -hmm. most people give up at that point. Yeah. But we're going to keep climbing mm -hmm. and we're going to get out of that hole. OK. And we're going to keep growing. And each time that we keep growing, the fall when it comes is not going to be as deep. It's not going to be as devastating and we're mm -hmm. going to have a lot more tools and skills to get ourselves up and out of it. And again, moving forward. And the next time that it comes again, it's going to be less deep than the time before, less mm -hmm. devastating, and we're going to be able to get out of it faster. Now, over time, we really kind of master this to a point of when we're really processing and working through these things, when we can overcome the mental and emotional stuff and we can get ourselves to be really strong internally. Yes. The falls actually become pretty simple mm -hmm. because it's not cutting to our core. It's not yeah. completely devastating. And right. we can say, Oh crap. Like, this week was awful, you know, but I'm not yeah. going to beat myself up about it. I know that I just have to be consistent. I just jump right back on. We're good. I didn't ruin all of my results. Right. And, yeah. and I can keep moving forward. So that's the ultimate goal of like getting, getting people on this process of climbing, but helping mm -hmm. them through the falls and giving them the tools to overcome the falls so yeah. that they're strong enough then to overcome all of these falls and challenges because now they're small right yeah. before they were massive and yeah. so they needed help to overcome those and to keep going and to learn how to get out but now they're tiny yeah and so most people once they get very strong internally and they have mm -hmm. a really really strong sense of self relapsing is, you know, like you'd have to fall really far to be, to go all the way back. Right. And, and yeah. it rarely happens because you've moved internally, you've moved your sense of self to a significantly higher place and yeah. you just don't, you don't fall in the same way. Mm -hmm. That's true. So true. And I think also you, you probably do feel the signs also, right. When you feel like you're, you're starting to slip, you can yep. also you know, stop yourself, you know, and, and figure out either go get help from your coach, go get help from your group or, you know, and, and reach out to others, you know, because you, you could, you're starting to see the signs of, you know, that you're falling back and then you yep. could stop yourself from actually, you know, relapse and, 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 you know, and, and be able to save yourself so you can continue to progress. It seems. Absolutely. And, you know, another thing that, that we do, um, to help people set people up for success so that they're not always falling is yeah. to think about the challenges that they know are already going to come up ahead of time. Right. 
So for example, like I have a lot of people there, you know, I'm, when I'm bringing people into my program, they're like, well, I've got a week long vacation. So I don't want to be in the program during vacation. And I say, well, I want you to be in the program on vacation. And yeah. reason being is because vacation is normal life and vacation yeah. and holidays is one of the biggest reasons why people fall off and they give up on yes. themselves. Oh, 100%. And so what we, what we want to do is before vacation comes, we start yeah. planning and we say, we, I mean, you can list out tons of challenges that are going to come yeah. up with being on vacation. So we address those challenges before you go, we make decisions before you go, we have snacks ready before you go. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you know how to be in control on that vacation, you yeah. know how to, uh, you know how to enjoy, you know, there are going to be, you want to enjoy your vacation, but yeah. you also don't need to completely sabotage yourself and the things that you've exactly. been working so hard for. So, you know, it's finding a balance, but we're able to actually identify people's challenges because we've been going on this whole, you know, this yeah. journey and falling and it was like you know what they are. You absolutely yeah. know what they are. So you can prepare for them ahead of time and have a plan of as soon as like, oh crap, this is coming, right? We yeah. pull out our plan. And that's, you know, we we try to, first of all, prevent it from even happening, like you were saying. Right. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you wanted to emphasize on some important factors, what would you say to the listeners? You know, what would you like them to really understand? I want them to understand that loving themselves and showing up for themselves is hands down the most important thing that they can do for themselves yeah. in terms of being sex successful and improving their physical health. Right. Because when you can transition your motivation from being external, like being on the scale or being like, I don't want people judging me. I want people to look at me better, right? Those are all very external motivation factors. Yeah. When you can transition your motivation to being internal, where you develop a genuine love for yourself, where you really respect yourself, where you really honor yourself, when you know how to regulate your emotions and you know how to be your own best friend, yeah, that's when you're actually going to be successful. That's when you're making decisions because you genuinely want to take care of yourself and not because, oh, I got to lose weight. I don't want to die early. I have yeah. to make this healthy choice. It's a right. very different environment. And so really helping people to recognize that you have to go internally yeah. if you want to be successful, truly successful in the long term externally. Wow. That's so true. That really is, you know, and those are really good points, you know, really, really good points. And also, can you tell everybody what your services are, the different services you provide? Yeah, absolutely. So what we have is a 16 week program and I call it a whole health transformation program. I didn't initially, you know, I didn't initially create it to be a weight loss program. It's a whole yeah. health transformation program. Right. But the reality is, is that people want to lose weight. That's just, yeah. you know, we want to, we want to look better. That's how we want to improve our health. So that yeah. is an important part of the process. And mm -hmm. so um, that's a very, you know, it's a very important and a very focused part of our program of yes, yeah. helping you lose weight, but we do all of the other aspects at the same time. So instead of, you know, going to your doctor and your doctor says, well, um, you can take a pill or I can send you to the nutritionist and then you go to the nutritionist and they teach you some things at one appointment and then they never, you know, they never talk to you again, or you never show up uh -huh. and it's like, okay, that was useless. And then yeah. you're going to your therapist and, and trying to get help from your therapist and everything's so disjointed and nobody gets anywhere. And so yeah. really, and truly what we've done is we've taken everything that mm -hmm. you need to truly transform yourself. Yeah. And also your health, your external health, losing weight all in one program and giving you an incredible amount of coaching and accountability to make sure that you make it all the way to the end. Wow. That's awesome. Now, where can people find you? Yeah. So I've, I've got a couple of different places they can find me. Of course, they can always find me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at my whole and happy life. 
And they can also go to my website. My website is again, the same thing, myholeandhappylife.com. So if you just remember my whole and happy life, and then either find me on Instagram or you can find me on the internet um, and, and reach out. I'm, I'm happy, always happy to have a conversation with anybody that's struggling, whether they want to join my program or not. Um, right. Always happy to have the conversation. Oh, that's amazing. You know, you have done so good. You know, I, I really admire everything that you put together and how your program really, it not, it not just helps just, just weight loss, but it really transform your entire health, really, you know, mentally, emotionally, and physically, it really taps into everything. And you know what, and, and even going through it, you know, spiritually, you'll, you'll be in, in, in connected also with yourself. And, and that's when you're all connected, that's when you really see the the big transition in yourself. And that's when you can look in the mirror and you see like a whole new you. And that's where I like really exciting. Some people get a little afraid because they don't know who that whole new you is going to be. Absolutely. But, it's scary. You know, I, it's I scary. never try to sugarcoat it. Like it's a journey. <laughs> it's a journey. It's a journey, but it's it's a good journey. I've taken that journey. I've had, you know, it, it's helped me tremendously. I believe in your program because I have done similar steps in my own life and it works and it helps and it it does it changes your overall the way you look at life, the way you perceive life, the way you react to things, the way you feel about yourself, just the way it it, you know, a program like yours just it boosts your self-esteem to no end. You know, once you start really getting into it and you start following it and and you're loyal and you do what you're supposed to do it just all falls into place and i assure others that are listening that if you do something like whitney's program you will feel much better about yourself in all areas of your life and that's what matters and you know we want to go through life we want to be happy healthy and productive those are my three things that everybody wants to be and everybody needs to be and you know some people don't think it's possible but it's it's possible. Everybody can make a change. Everybody can improve their lives. You know, everybody has the capabilities. I always say, make your dreams become a reality. And I think your program can really do that. And I really commend you for it. Absolutely. Thank you. I appreciate that. Oh, you're very welcome. Well, thank you so much, Whitney, for coming on the show. Everybody remember that she's part of our podcast community. She has a, she has going to be doing a lot more podcasts with us talking about health and weight loss and, you know, and lots of other topics related. And you can find her on, on The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi and you can find her podcast. And thank you so much for today. And thank you for sharing all this valuable information. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're welcome. You have a great day. You too.